What if we told you there was one simple trick you could do to instantly improve the quality of your speakers and microphone? And no, it doesn't involve buying a new set of speakers or a microphone. It's pretty simple, actually. Uh, acoustic foam. If you've been a subscriber to our channel for a long time, then you'll remember the good old days where we had a bit of unwanted echo in our audio. We had moved into a giant warehouse studio with a two-story tall metal roof and a solid concrete floor, and as a result, recording good quality audio was a challenge. So why did that specific combination produce such terrible echoes? Well, sound is transmitted through the air via waves. In an ideal world, you want these sound waves to travel in a straight line from your source to your destination. This is how you get the best quality sound, whether it's your voice hitting a microphone or sounds from speakers hitting your ears. However, things rarely work out as well as they do in simple physics scenarios. In the real world, sound propagates outwards in a three-dimensional sphere, with only a small fraction of it all going directly from point A to point B. These stray sound waves then bounce off every hard surface in sight, including walls, furniture, and ceilings. And they'll keep right on bouncing until their energy is dissipated, like kids on a sugar high. And that is the concept behind echoes and reverberations. Echoes are a simple reflection of sound, like this. Echo! echo. While a reverberation is a complex reflection of multiple sounds and echoes all at once, like this. Reverb. So while a certain level of echo and reverb from a live performance in a strictly controlled environment using high quality equipment and an entire team of staff dedicated to live monitoring sounds great, it sucks for everyone else. But this is where acoustic treatments come in. Its main goal is to absorb and stop the reflection of as many stray sound waves as possible, leaving you with nice, clean audio. For the perfect setup, you'll need three different types of acoustic foam. Pyramid tiles, corner bass traps, and cube bass traps. Now, pyramid tiles are the most well-known and probably the first thing you think of when someone mentions acoustic foam. These are great for big, flat areas and help to greatly dampen high and mid-frequency sound waves. If cost was no issue and you didn't mind the way it looks, then you could tile these entirely over your walls for as few reflections as possible. However, for most people, they're still plenty effective even if you space them out in a checkerboard pattern. Now, corner bass traps cover a corner with two intersecting planes, which is known as a dihedral corner. These traps are designed to sit in the corners of your room between the floor and ceiling and help to greatly dampen low frequency concentrations. If you've ever set up a subwoofer in a room before, then you may have noticed how it sounds much boomier and more overpowering in corners than anywhere else in a room. Now, cube bass traps function very similarly and are designed to sit in the top and bottom corners of your room, which are known as trihedral corners because they have three intersecting planes. While you could get away with using only corner bass traps, the additional mass and volume of the cubes are slightly more effective and it just looks cooler. Cubes, man. Now, we weren't quite ready to commit to treating our entire studio just yet, so we built a scale model instead to help demonstrate the effects. This is our patented super accurate sound measuring box of science, or SASMBS for short. In the future, we'll be using it for measuring the frequency response of speakers, and we might think about changing the name, but for now, we'll use it to demonstrate the effects of acoustic foam. So now we're here in the back of our old studio. As you can hear, there's quite a bit of reverb from my voice bouncing off the metal ceiling and this big metal garage door and the drywall and the concrete floor. This really is one of the worst case scenarios for recording accurate audio, which is why we got the heck out of here. Ah! I'm indecent, just kidding. This is what it's like recording audio in a small room without any foam, just drywall surfaces. You'd, you'd expect because it's small, the reverb wouldn't be as bad, but as you can hear, it's kinda nasty. And finally, this is me crawling into the SASMUS because we built it for measuring tiny speakers and not for fitting humans inside. As you can hear, my voice has a fuller range with absolutely zero echo and reverb. Very nice. So why is that so important? 
Well, think about cameras for a second. Everyone always tells you to shoot pictures in a raw file format so you capture the greatest detail and have the best source material to work with in post. The same applies for audio. If you start with a clean and detailed recording, then you have more audio information that you can use for post-processing. You can always add echo or reverb in software, but it's pretty hard to remove those things in post without getting audio artifacts and distortion, which you might have noticed that we had some of those in our old audio from the old studio. The quality of your voice is one of the most important things for people who do voiceovers, record podcasts, or stream games. You can spend hundreds or even thousands on better microphones and amplifiers, but if you're in a reflective room, then that increased audio quality will be kind of ruined by the reverb. Now, if you've watched this whole thing and are like, I need some foam for my own studio or room, then you can check out our friends over at aerozoom.com who are gracious enough to sponsor us this set of foam. Use the coupon code in the description below to save 10% on your purchase. The foam comes vacuum packed to save space, so you may need to wait a few days for it to fully expand. You can use spray adhesives to permanently attach them, but we recommend using some double-sided tape instead in case you need to make any changes. Now, if you really need some sound dampening, but you aren't quite ready yet to jump into foam, then there are many things you can do to start acoustically treating your room. Lay down a thick carpet on the floor and hang curtains over any windows. You can put up canvas paintings on your walls or fill up bookshelves with some books. You should start to notice an audible difference as you start replacing hard reflective surfaces with soft, absorbable ones. Mm. Well guys, I hope you learned a thing or two about better audio today. While we primarily focused on recording better audio with a microphone, all of these principles apply to hearing better sound from speakers as well. But we'll save that for our next video featuring the now infamous Sasmus. Thanks for watching guys. You can click here for previous videos and check us out on Twitter over there. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, I'm not going to take all this foam and make a foam pit so I can jump in it. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. I'm, a, I'm an adult.